Hello and welcome to Chemistry 105, which is organic chemistry. And yes, this is how most people think of organic chemistry or the memories of it. But since I don't call them exams, you shouldn't have any exam fears. Uh, let's see how I do this. Yeah, and so hopefully I'm going to turn you even more geeky than I did in Chem 104. And for those of you new to me, welcome. Uh, so you're going to get to understand a whole new world of cartoons um, and comics that are just wonderful chemistry cartoons. And the gnomes will be back many times. So gnomes are a chemistry term. Um, and so my hope is that you will be like the gnomes and you will celebrate organic chemistry rather than that F word that was up there before. And those are organic molecules too. And so I have a theory the original cave drawings are actually organic molecules. All right. So this, this slide, I showed it last term, Chem 104. Most people think chemistry is like the scientist and what it's really like, this is organic chemistry. Um, yeah, and since we can't be in lab, um, I actually had a dream and my son's calling it a prophecy that um, I decided to just have lab and you all showed up. And I wasn't worried that you weren't wearing goggles. I was more worried that you weren't wearing masks, but, um, and, and you were also terrible in lab because you had no lab experience. And I was like, what are you all doing? Because the labs we usually do in Chem 105 are so much fun. We're going to do fun ones in your kitchen. And for those of you who don't know me, there I am. Um, I'm really that short for those of you who do know me, but just on Zoom. All right, so this is just a quick introduction and a quick survey. You don't need to be taking any notes. Uh, you'll be doing that during class time. But we're going to start out uh, for the first three weeks talking about hydrocarbons, which are just made up of hydrogen and carbon. So there's the anes, the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. This is probably my favorite porcupine joke. Um, and we'll be talking about bond angles, which is extremely important because it determines what's going to fit into a neuroreceptor or into a hormone shape and stuff. And so um, we'll talk about this the very first day, but uh, we can have linear, right? So 180 degrees, we can make the trigonal planar or planar triangle shape or the tetrahedral. And we'll do a quick review and um, because we'll run into this when we walk through the hydrocarbons. Uh, and we'll also walk through how to name them. And so that actually is our first lecture. And uh, the thing that the hydrocarbons are famous for is they are our fossil fuels. That is the age that we have been in uh, and that we are hopefully leaving as we move into a magnetic age. Um, but it is also the plastic age. And so they are what makes plastics and all of our paint thinners and the things that clean up um, that you have to take to hazardous waste. And this is why I joke that you can all dress up like a lump of coal because king coal is the fossil fuels and that is carbon. And that is what we're talking about. Organic chemistry is the study of carbon-based compounds. And actually one other set of carbon-based compounds are the aromatics uh, without, so, so this holiday card here, which is awesome, uh, whenever you see just a corner, and we're gonna talk about this in the first lecture, and uh, those are carbons. But when you see the red or the blue, uh, the reds are oxygens and the little blue balls, those are nitrogens. And so you see when we start, we're gonna start then when we get into the fourth, fifth, sixth week is adding oxygens, nitrogens, there's even a sulfur in there. Um, and so they're called aromatic because once we start adding oxygens and nitrogens, they do have this wonderful aroma um, and the ginger bread cookies, right? The little gingerbread men. And so it's spicing up your life with lots of flavors. So making chai, uh, the word for tea in Sanskrit. And so that's just a picture um, from when we were in Tibet. That's the highest monastery in the world uh, that had to be rebuilt because China did destroy it, but it did get rebuilt. It's just below Everest Base Camp. And this is uh, the daughter of who had been the head Lama and she was serving Pimba and Joey and myself because 
Pimba on an expedition like 20 years ago had brought medicine to the monastery and had saved the, at the time, the head mama's life. All right. Anyway, just me walking down memory lane because you're going to get to do class presentations this term. So I'll get to know you. And so you may find that you can include some fun pictures and make it more personal in this virtual world that sometimes feels very impersonal. All right, um, that's just the ORAC value. This again, you're not having to take notes, but um, you will be picking a topic at some point of an organic molecule. And so the molecules that give the aroma, uh, the flavoring to all of our spices, they turn out they are the most potent things out there. It's like mother nature gave us everything we needed to heal our bodies and to be healthy uh, and expansive. All right, well, once we move away from the hydrocarbons, right, the chemistry cat says, what's the difference between a hydrocarbon and alcohol? O, as in OH. And then we'll make the alcohols into ether and we can go to ether island, um, not really. Um, and then we'll look at, yeah, mercury. Mercury loves thiols, which means sulfur. And so we'll get into all of this. Most of the thiols in your body are in your brain. And so mercury travels to your brain, but sulforaphane, thiols, sulfur compounds are actually very potent healing also. And sulforaphane is that molecule uh, in broccoli and cabbage and bok choy and kale that is um, what makes it a wonder drug. In fact, it downregulates 63 genes in cancer. Uh, this is a slide from my biochem class. So Jeremy may, may or may not remember this slide. I call this one of the guardians of the genome. Um, it uprates tumor suppressor genes. And as long as you chew, because the molecule is not actually there, it's hidden in this other molecule. Um, and so it has to be broken down by an enzyme, the enzyme that breaks it down needs to be stimulated. And so that's what chewing does. Um, so cutting also stimulates it, but it takes about 30 minutes. And so is, and the final product, the sulforaphane is actually heat stable. And so as long as you chop, chop your veggies and then wait about 20 minutes for the enzyme to do its thing, then you're gonna be okay. You still don't wanna overcook your food, but that's the thing with eating raw. Um, the original molecule is heat sensitive, but if you chew your food, you have to chew it. Um, the original molecule, I'm sorry, the original molecule is not heat sensitive. The enzyme is that would break it down. And so that's the whole thing with the raw, they're saying you're destroying the enzyme. But as long as you combine some kind of raw, so a salad, a mustard actually has it uh, with these veggies that you may have cooked. Uh, in Chinese medicine, they always cook the vegetables. Um, and so those of you who know me, I am very much um, connected to nutrition. That's one of my passions. Um, and so you'll see that infused into my lectures quite a bit as we explore these molecules in organic chemistry. And again, this is just an overview to help you to try to appreciate, because sometimes we get caught up in, oh, this bonds this and this bonds that, but it does because by the end of the term, you start looking at these molecules and this is not as overwhelming as it might seem like right now. All right, and yeah, the cannabinoids. Um, so the CBDs, THC, those are, they have oxygens and so we will run into them and they are, somebody always picks one of these, um, for their topic. So again, you're gonna be picking a organic molecule and writing about it. And also you're gonna be doing a presentation on Zoom. So I'll be splitting the class into two groups. So it'll probably be about nine people and it ends up being really fun. Some of you have done that with me in another class. Uh, we'll walk into the carboxylic acids, which are our fats. And this is actually something and I'll talk about, we'll run into these slides again, cause I'll probably do when I have the time, a small bit um, on each group to try to keep you realizing why we're learning this, that you've probably all heard of folic acid, which is one of the B vitamins. Um, it's one of the ones when women are pregnant, that's really important to keep the baby's um, spinal column healthy. And it 
actually folic acid is uh, toxic to our body. It needs to be in, it has to be methylfolate. Our body does put the methyl group on, but it turns out that's not even quite, quite right. It needs to be in this form. And the thing that's different about this last one is it has at the end, the carboxylic acid is ionized. And so our body needs things to be ionized. And so we will start running into cations and anions again. All right. But right now, we're at King Cole to start with. Um, yeah. And so I'll talk about this more when we get to them. And esters, 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 esters are the smells. We usually do in a really fun lab where you make several different esters and you have to smell them to figure out what they are. So we'll get to that. And who knows? And yes, then we finally walk into the wonderful world of nitrogen. And that's when everyone starts picking their topic or the people who pick their topic will change their topic. Uh, the world of alkaloids, alkaloid just means a plant-based compound with nitrogen. And there are probably an infinite number of these. Um, so from nicotine, caffeine, morphine, quinine. Um, and so these were actually poisons um, and in small amounts, they have medicinal uses for us. And of course, my alkaloid of choice is chocolate. Um, I would usually tell you dark chocolate is my preference. I can give you my address where my mailbox is if you need that. Uh, that looks like it's a happy neurotransmitter. So a lot of our neurotransmitters are nitrogen based, the monoamines. So amine means nitrogen. Um, and so that's serotonin. Uh, and coffee and tea, they're also guardians of the genome. They do so much. Um, Jeremy, no, you cannot do tea again. You'll have to pick a different topic. Um, but yeah, there's actually so many molecules um, besides just caffeine that actually have an effect. And yeah. And then actually I do a PowerPoint on the molecules of meditation. Uh, there's actually many. And it was an article I read and um, it really fascinated me. And so, yeah meditation lab will be back. There's the love hormone, which is oxytocin. See all the nitrogens and oxygens and sulfurs. And then all those black corners, those are carbon because it's the carbon that's the glue that's holding everything together. And then the happy neurotransmitter, people who need like beyond happiness, the hallucinogens uh, actually end up mimicking and we'll get to that. It's um, something also fascinating because of this whole, everybody's gluten intolerant, your teacher has issues herself, uh, is that wheat protein changed. And it's uh, the protein, it's not the carbohydrate, it's actually a protein and it's an exorphin. So the endorphins, endo means inside of us, it's, an, it's morphine that's inside of us that we naturally make as a painkiller. And why gluten, why you can't get enough of it is because it actually stimulates this, um, the same receptor. And so you get this feeling of, yeah, what's the exogenous endorphin mean? It means it's like morphine or heroin. It binds to the opiate receptor and changes our perception of pain. And so we keep eating and eating and eating, right? Um, chocolate and cheese also are opioids because uh, they bind to that. Um, you know, there's all these molecules, the polyphenols, you would pick a specific one, the different vitamins. Um, and you don't, don't worry, we will talk about this. This is yeah, weeks to pick a topic. Um, yeah, but these are all different things that help repair our DNA. And this is, um, right, berries and actually oyster shells. So yeah, berries. Berries, berries, all praise the berries. I made my mom a berry smoothie. She, she, her blood pressure um, this morning, she's like, it was an all time low, 104 over 52. And I told her she needs to stop her blood pressure medicine when I'm ever visiting. Um, but anyway, berries are packed with so many molecules. Uh, the skin is actually colored to attract insects so that they will spread the seeds. So which berry is the best? Well, in my opinion, every berry is the best. You wanna eat 
all the berries. And this is winter time, so we're eating frozen berries right now. And so different types each day and each has so many different molecules, including the ones that make them dark purple, the blackberries and the blueberries, which is the anthocyanins. Um, and then three fruits per day. So this is a study from 10 years ago, funded by Uncle Bill and Auntie Melinda. Uh, and it was at the time, the largest analysis of death and disease. Um, and so in 2020, we had a different type of analysis of death and disease risk factors, but the leading cause in the US of death and disease is still diet. Um, and that's because I say, we eat like we dress, we eat beige. Um, smoking is actually no longer the leading cause of death. Uh, so yeah, we tend to, that was Cookie Monster, that picture, uh, and looking between a plate of vegetables and fruit, which are brightly colored, and his cookie. Uh, so what did they find in the study was the worst aspect of our diet. And those of you who've been with me before, well, it actually tells you at the top of the slide. Actually, the worst aspect of their diet was not just that we eat crap. It was that we don't eat the right stuff. So it's not saying I'm going to give up this. It's more that what they found is you have to start saying, I'm going to start eating this three pieces of fruit per day. It's a lot initially, but what happens when you make the commitment to eat three pieces of fruit per day, you stop eating a lot of the other stuff because it has fiber and it fills you up as opposed to that beige food, right? Uh, and the thing is a lot of people say, but, but fruit has sugar and I'm told I'm not supposed to have sugar and fruit's bad for you. Uh, fruit sugar is bound to the fiber. And so a high percentage of it actually doesn't get absorbed. It actually um, passes through and it feeds our microbiome. And we get lots of DNA repair because there's so many micronutrients. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. So imagine what three apples a day would keep away. Wouldn't that be wonderful right now in 2021? Look at that, Cookie Monster and his other friend. I don't know the name of that one. Does anybody? Anyway, the reason I'm saying this, oh, there's Joey uh, eating his apple a day. He has three pieces of fruit every day, as do I, as does my mom. Um, sugar also destroys your brain. So we've processed stuff to crap. So there's no fiber. And when they add the fiber separately, like those power bars people think are healthy, that fiber is not bound to the sugar because they came in separate sources. And so that fiber actually doesn't feed your microbiome, it turns out. It has to be fiber with the, it has to come from a natural source, not where it's been processed and put back together. Um, yeah, don't fool with mother nature, but this is a study that two, just two commercial baked goods per week. Yeah, an easy bake oven. I so wanted that at Christmas when I was a little girl. Anyway, doubles your rates of depression. Um, and the reason is the free radicals. So we will be getting into free radicals once we get into oxygen. Um, so we won't see this so much initially, but we will be talking about yogurt uh, and it does shrink your brain and it is addictive and it overstimulates the dopamine. So there's a brain shrunk by sugar. Um, so we need to eat nutrient dense foods, our fruits and vegetables. They're high in phytochemicals. There's a reason I'm going through this. So just be patient keep listening. Yeah, and this is that slide was always amazing to me about physical and emotional well being. So usually I'm doing this the first day. Uh, and so we get to interact and talk about these things. But um, yeah, the green is the plant based diet and the brown is the beige American diet. And this is looking at emotional and physical well being. And you can see there's like there's actually negative well-being points in depression um, and physical <laughs> role limit, right, uh, on the beige diet. Um, supplements don't do the same thing. So again, it has to be packaged perfectly. And my understanding, my belief, it's beyond a belief, um, is it's not just about the molecules. There is something more that's holding it together. And that is the vibes. It's all about the vibes, those positive vibes. Um, and so you always have a choice, right? 
and right, we can eat all this, this, this crap. We know it's crap. Um, or we can choose to start eating healthy. And the reason I brought this up is you all are starting the term with that extra credit opportunity and you have to do it now, not at the end. You can't say, can I do it now? Because this is a 30 day challenge. And so since we're starting at an awkward day in the term, it's not even a full moon or a new moon. You got to figure this out this week. You got to decide what you're going to do and you're going to commit yourself for the next 30 days to do this. So let's walk through some of the possibilities. It could be I'm going to eat a green salad every day. And again, they found out that if you make a change that is a positive change, that will naturally get rid of some of the other habits. But eating your greens, George Washington, yeah, I'm not far from actually on Christmas Day, we used to go and watch, uh, they reenact George crossing the Delaware. Um, it was always fun. I don't know if they did it this year. Anyway, today, uh, one in 25 people eat a dozen servings of greens per month. I eat them every day. I probably eat, uh, well, it's my smoothie and I have a salad with each meal. So I eat at least three servings a day. Um, yeah, and we're talking a dozen a month. This is every other day and only one in 25. And there's like around 25 of us, probably about 20 of us. And yeah, that, that makes the statistics pretty bad because that means some of you don't even eat greens. And usually we're sitting there live and, and there's usually somebody says, yeah, I don't eat salads. I don't like salads. And it's because they never understood how to make a salad. So that doesn't mean if you're going to eat your salad, doesn't mean loading it with all the oils and craps. So it's got to be good, one, fun salads. And usually you get very expressive with your salads. People do take this as their challenge for 30 days. They saw a 20 fold decrease in heart disease and stroke. Um, and this has to do with another one of these beautiful organic molecules. Uh, and so what happens is our body, this is a natural molecule that is found in the mitochondria of our bodies. And so oxygen, that's where oxygen goes to make ATP and oxygen is always stealing electrons. And so the ubiquinol is there to repair. And so the ubiquinol loses electrons and hydrogens with it. Um, and so it becomes ubiquinone and it needs some way to get back to ubiquinol. And that is where chlorophyll comes in. So ubiquinol, that piece all the way to the right, is the most one of the most powerful antioxidants, um, probably the most powerful one in our mitochondria. Some people will take it as a supplement, but you don't have to take it as a supplement because it's already there. The problem is it's lost electrons. You guys remember losing electrons? It's been oxidized. So we just have to reduce it. And to do that, you need chlorophyll, which is in greens. That's why they're green, right? Um, if you've never seen this picture, human blood and he um, hemoglobin and chlorophyll are pretty much the same molecule. They're both porphyrin rings, um, except the center. So our blood hemoglobin has iron in the center and chlorophyll has magnesium. Um, and so, yeah, eat your greens, eat your greens, chlorophyll, gives back those electrons. And so it gets it back to ubiquinol. So ubiquinone means it's a ketone. Ubiquinol means it's an alcohol. We'll look at this again when we get to ketones, if I remember. Eat a salad every day for the next 30 days and you'll be sold for the rest of your life. It will make your brain 11 years younger. And I know some of you are like, well, I'm only 18. And so that would make me, you know what? I would love Seven-year-olds are so joyful and playful and have such an amazing imagination. And yeah, and actually most of you are 18 years old. If you've been eating American diet and American food, your brain is like 50 years old. Some of you probably have brains older than mine because the shrinkage, yeah. Um, this, this is hysterical to me. Joey always breaks out laughing. The average serving in the study yeah, we're just a tenth. We're like, so they eat like a, one bite of lettuce and then the rest sits there. So, all right, they were averaging. So Cookie Monster eats his salad. Or you could do this. This is a tough one. But some of you have been with me and made some of the other changes. Go for it. This is right. It's a new year. We're supposed to do it. Eating legumes every day. That says every meal. 
that's like huge. Um, I don't do that because I eat fruit for breakfast, but like when I was in Costa Rica, in most other countries, legumes, beans are at every meal. I remember at breakfast, it was great. I did down there. Uh, this is a 2007 cancer research study, the most important predictor of survival in older people. My mom turned 86 today and she's doing amazing. And it is, we eat legumes every day. So it could be soy. Um, soy has been really badly maligned. So you can't do your paper on soy, but there are molecules in soy you can talk about. But it's loaded with protein and fiber and has, uh, it's rich in prebiotics uh, and feast for your microbiota. That's your bacteria in your gut. And it does change. They found you can change it in less than 30 days to the good type. And your microbiome determines your immune system. So let's all get a healthy immune system. And then we don't have to worry. That's going to take forever to try to vaccinate and make vaccines because we will all just be healthy and we're going to make all of the people in our life healthy too. So that's addition for the full challenge. Somebody has to do it with you. You got to get somebody in your life to do the challenge with you because you can. And yeah, it's actually been really inspirational reading the papers. All right. Um, so this is a propionoate. So most people call it propionoic acid, um, which actually is what your microbiome makes, and then it feeds you. And we'll talk about that when we get to carboxylic acid. It's called the second meal effect that the legumes actually blunt the absorption of sugar for like several hours. So if you eat legumes at lunch and don't eat them at dinner, it doesn't matter because they're still blunting and it's because it does this coating of your intestines. It's so cool. All right. Anyway, eat your legumes, it lowers your blood pressure and cholesterol, makes your tummy slimmer, regulates blood glucose and insulin, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that's why this is commercial from my day way back when I was a little girl. Um, but you could do the one, do you really need to eat meat? Yeah, go for it. I've always had a couple students to say, you know what, I'm going to do it this term and go for it for the next 30 days. I'm not going to eat animal products. Why not? It's 30 days. What do you have to lose? It's really, what do you have to gain? Or you could be like, I can give up dairy because dairy makes your blood, it makes your blood extremely acidic. It actually is a cause of osteoporosis um, and cancer. Yeah, those numbers. Dairy increased the rates of cancer. This was in Japan post World War II. They didn't have dairy before that. Um, or you can just be like, I can give up milk, but I'm not gonna give up cheese. Or you can just say, I'm gonna give up the cheese. It's the cheese is, remember that opioids we were talking about? It's, it's an opioid. That's why you're like, I'll give up all the other dairy, but not the casein, the cheese, because it's an opioid. We're addicted to it. That's what it looks like. And that makes this jumbled mess. And, or you could say, you know what? I'm gonna give up junk food for 30 days. So again, keep track of when you start. And there'll be a folder where you get to submit what you did and we'll talk about it in 30 days. So I had a student in the spring and she gave up chips. She lost four inches off her waist. She has, a three, she has three children. The youngest is three years old. And I actually met her in the store because I randomly run into students um, with our masks on, right? Um, but she couldn't believe it. She was like, I, I couldn't lose those last. And she said it. she didn't even do anything different. Um, it was just, she stopped eating chips. Or if you're going to fast food, this was, you know, last spring when we all went to shut down, it was the end of, my like chem 106 and we did presentations. We had this amazing potluck and we we're all giving hugs and stuff. And I said, you know, it's going to be great. We're going to find nobody's going to go to fast food anymore. And boy, was I wrong on that. I don't understand what happened, how we've convinced people that they need to go to fast food. It's yeah. So give it up. Um, and then write about it. What happens? And or yeah. Give up, give up the Twinkies if you're a Twinkie fan or a Ding Dong fan or a Lollipop fan and it's extra credit. And there it is. There's my mom. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Um, that's actually pie I made her this summer. Um, 
so today she got a peanut butter cup pie. Um, so they're raw. I only use dates. Um, so they're whole dates. So there's fiber in them. So it's a whole, yeah, we had spent a week talking about this. So it could be picking a healthy change like legumes, three pieces of fruit a day, uh, a salad every day, G bombs is mushrooms, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, uh, la, 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 berry seeds every day for 30 days in a row. Or it could be that you're going to give up something that you're like, yeah, I'm one of those people. And they, people always tell me after 30 days, I was one of those people who I ate fast food. I'm, I'm drinking two monster drinks every day. I'm going to give them up. I don't know what it is, but you all know there's something. And often it's rather than giving something up, it's to start a healthy habit for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, you'll write what you did, why, how it went, what happened, your thoughts, your inspirations. We'll talk about it. You've talked to me in class, come to an office hour. Anyway, I'm so excited, so excited to share uh, organic chemistry with you so that as we go through these topics throughout the term, your understanding of organic chemistry will help you to understand things about neurotransmitters or things about meditation or things about, I don't know what it is you want to understand better in your other classes. So don't see it as a chore, see it as this beautiful opportunity so that you can help the people in your life to be happier and healthier. All right, namaste, I will see you soon. I have to figure out how to stop this.